question, <laughs> what law school did you attend, and where did you place in that class? And the other question oh, is, man. could you quickly, I, I think we all I, I think I probably have a much higher IQ than you do, I suspect. <laughs> I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. In the first year in law school, I decided I didn't want to be in law school and ended up in the bottom two-thirds of my class and then decided I wanted to stay, went back to law school and, in fact, ended up in the top half of my class. I won the international moot court competition. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only needed 123 credits, and I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd Senator, like, Frank. That Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class, that he does not have three degrees from college, and that he was not named outstanding political science student in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class, and won only one degree, not three. Joe Biden ranked 76th in a class of 85 at the University of Syracuse Law School. The first Kinnick in a thousand generations to be able to get the university. Why is it that Joe Biden is the first in his family ever to go to a university? Why is Glennis the first woman in her family in a thousand generations to be able to get the university? Was it because all our predecessors were thick? Why is it that my wife is sitting out there in the audience is the first in her family to ever go to college. Is it because our fathers and mothers were not bright? Was it because they were weak? Those people who could wait, work eight hours underground and then come up and play football? Weak? Is it because they didn't work hard? My ancestors who worked in the coal mines in northeast Pennsylvania and would come up after 12 hours and play football for four hours? It was because there was no platform upon which they could stand. It's because they didn't have a platform upon which to stand. Now, on, on the political scene, uh, one of the Democratic candidates is Senator Joseph Biden. Have you seen the problem he's been having? He went around and made a speech. And apparently, he quoted a, I think it was a British politician, took his speech and kind of paraphrased it as his own. And then the press got on him, and then he was charged also with taking part of Bobby Kennedy's speeches. And Biden says, not to worry, he reassured his staff, he said, we have nothing to fear, but fear itself. <laughs> the only way we're going to get rid of Saddam Hussein, and it's going to require guys like you in uniform to be back on foot in the desert taking, the son of a, the, uh, taking Saddam down. Some of my own party have said that it was a mistake to go to Iraq in the first place. But the cost of not acting against Saddam, I think, would have been much greater. I made a mistake. I said it 14 years ago. I trusted George Bush to keep his word. He said he was not going to go into Iraq. From the moment shock and awe started, from that moment, I was opposed to the effort and I was outspoken. I came back. I came back from South Africa trying to see Nelson Mandela and getting arrested for trying to see him on Robbins Island. He was in prison. I had the great honor of meeting him. I had the great honor of being arrested with our UN ambassador on the streets of Soweto trying to get to see him on Robbins Island. When I said arrested, I meant I was not able to, I was not able to move. Cops, Upper Connors would not let me go with them, made me stay where I was. I guess I, I wasn't arrested, I was stopped. I, I wasn't arrested, I was stopped. Never said I oppose fracking. You said it I, on tape. I did show the tape. Put it on your website. I'll put it on. Put it on the website. The fact of the matter is Should he's flat lying. Would you flat. rule out banning fracking? I do rule out banning fracking. Would there be any place for fossil fuels, including coal and fracking, in the Biden administration? No, it would be, we, would, we would work it out. We would make sure it's eliminated and no more subsidies for either one of those. I guarantee you, we're going to end fossil fuel. No more, no new fracking. And I'd gradually move away from fracking. And I think it's critically important on day one 
that we end any fossil fuel leases on public lands. Uh, well, like, what about, say, stopping fracking and stopping yes. new pipeline infrastructure? Yes. And, new pipeline. And, and, exactly. and they, they want to do the same thing I want to do. They want to phase out fossil fuels, and we're going to phase out fossil fuels. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. What I would do as president is several more things, because things have changed. I would, in fact, make sure that there is, we immediately surge to the border. All those people are seeking asylum. They deserve to be heard. That's who we are. We're a nation that says if you want to flee and you're fleeing oppression, you should come. First of all, the idea that Joe Biden said come, because I, I heard the other day that they're, they're coming because they know I'm a nice guy and I won't do they're what Trump did. This. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. They're not. The adults are being sent back. The adults are being sent back. When you and I talked last, we talked about it's one thing to have the vaccine, which we didn't have when we came into office. The vaccine was developed and authorized under a Republican administration. And it's been distributed and administered under a Democratic administration under a Republican administration, under a Republican administration. It's one thing for literally criminals to break through cordon, go into the Capitol, kill a police officer and be held unaccountable. One of the mysteries of the January 6th insurrection is solved tonight. The D.C. medical examiner today ruled that Capitol Hill police officer Brian Sicknick died of natural causes. The autopsy report indicates Sicknick suffered from two strokes and a blood clot or from a blood clot the day after he confronted rioters. The medical examiner reports finding no evidence of internal or external injuries. It's going to be and anyway. And if we I don't do drive an 18 wheeler, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wish oh, I yeah. could. <laughs> That's I awesome. got to. <laughs> Mr. President, we'll go this way, please, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Good job. Enjoy. Thank you. And again, so here's the Mac LR electric, fully battery electric, first of its kind in, in, uh, in North America. And you'll see as we go around the corner here, Department of Sanitation in New York City is our launch customer. Is a Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not. Because you have the Afghan troops have 300,000 well equipped, as well equipped as any army in the world and an air force against something like 75,000 Taliban. It is not inevitable. Of course, Afghanistan is on the brink of falling to the Taliban. Bagram Air Base and the main prison have been taken now. Kabul is expected to fall in a matter of hours to the Taliban. Americans are evacuating the last of their staff and will shut their embassy on Tuesday. And as you know, Global News has... No one, I shouldn't say no one, the consensus was that it was highly unlikely that in 11 days they'd collapse and fall and the leader of Afghanistan would flee the country. That's a very different question than whether or not.
So Americans should understand that troops might have to be there beyond August 31st. No, Americans should understand that we're going to try to get it done before August 31st. But if we don't, the if, troops will if stay. If we don't, we'll determine at the time who's left. And? And if, there are American force, if there's American citizens left, we're going to stay till we get them all out. Last night in Kabul, the United States ended 20 years of war in Afghanistan. As General McKenzie said, this is the way the mission was designed. The bottom line, 90 percent of Americans in Afghanistan who wanted to leave were able to leave. 90 percent, 90 percent, 90 percent of Americans in Afghanistan who wanted to leave were able to leave. We struck ISIS-K remotely days after they murdered 13 of our service members and dozens of innocent Afghans. The ISIS targets that were, were, were taken out involved uh, two individuals who were uh, significant planners and facilitators for, uh, for ISIS. Uh, for ISIS-K. The fact that we have had two successful strikes confirmed by CENTCOM tells you that our over-the-horizon capacity works and is working. We had very good intelligence uh, that ISIS-K was preparing uh, a specific type vehicle uh, at a specific type location. To other news here this Friday night, the Pentagon now admitting the deadly drone strike in the last days of the U.S. withdrawal from Kabul was a, quote, tragic mistake. Ten civilians, including seven children, killed in the blast. Here's our chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz. Tonight, the U.S. military admitting to a horrific mistake that left seven innocent children and three innocent adults, including an aid worker for an American company, dead. I offer my profound condolences to the family and friends of those who were killed. Our investigation now concludes that the strike was a tragic mistake. The deadly attack came just three days after a suicide bomber killed 13 American service members and some 170 Afghans at the Kabul airport. The Pentagon said intelligence indicated another attack was imminent. So for eight hours, U.S. drones then followed a car they thought had linked up with ISIS-K. Officials say when the driver loaded the vehicle with what they thought were explosives, a Hellfire missile was launched. Even days later, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs supporting the strike. We had very good intelligence uh, that ISIS-K was preparing uh, a specific type vehicle uh, at a specific type location. I know it's a righteous strike. But it was this New York Times investigation that first called the strike into question. The driver of the car was identified as Zamri Ahmadi, an aid worker who they determined from this surveillance video was loading water canisters into the car with his colleagues, not explosives. Today, the Secretary of Defense also acknowledging the mistake, saying, we now know that there was no connection between Mr. Ahmadi and ISIS Khorasan, that his activities on that day were completely harmless and not at all related to the imminent threat we believed we faced. I've done some dumb things, and I'll do dumb things again.